What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Collider Interview Studio at South by Southwest 2024. I am with the phenomenal team behind Backspot. I was so sad when I missed this at TIFF. And then I watched it and I was like even madder at myself for not watching it sooner. <laughs> this is phenomenal, phenomenal Thank you. work Thank here. You. Thank you. Clearly I know what Backspot is. <laughs> if our audience has not been to TIFF, Sundance, or now South by Southwest, they're not gonna know what your movie is just yet. So DW, would you give a brief description of the film? Yes, uh, it follows the lead character, Riley, uh, who is a cheerleader and really wants to get to the next kind of elite team. And the coach on that elite team is Evan Rachel Wood. Uh, so Riley ends up kind of running towards that. And we just see a glimpse into cheerleading, how crazy it is and the, the pressure and the stress and uh, yeah. Oh, I have many questions about that aspect of the film. <laughs> but first, just for fun for each of you, because whenever I go to a movie theater and I see someone's name tag and the film they choose to put on the name tag, I get really happy. <laughs> this movie had one and it was Bend It Like Beckham. If all of you worked in a movie theater, what movie would be on your name tag? I mean, mine was okay. Bend It Like Beckham. So I, I had a, feeling. I had a, like, I had a, a feeling. piece of me uh, <laughs> and that movie really like set some things off in my brain to pursue directing. So that that's that's why it was on Riley's name tag. Did you keep it? Did I keep the name tag? I do. Well, I think, at least in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I have it somewhere. We yeah. actually do. <laughs> and like some of the Cineplex uniforms. Yes. Uh, my little name tag would probably be Boy by Taika Waititi. Ooh, good pick. <laughs> right now, all of us strangers. Ooh. <gasps> Fancy. This is like what? This is like when you have a tag. What is this? So when I'm, you have your name... <laughs> When you like when you work at a movie theater and then you have what your favorite movie oh, your is favorite. under Capote. your name. What is it? Capote. Ooh. Yeah. Wow, what like a diverse range of films too. <laughs> I like this. I like and this. And we will debate. <laughs> I'll, I'll also just say because you brought up all of us strangers, not enough people are talking about it right I now. Don't think and so. it enrages me. I don't think so. I was crying. I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> that movie is that movie is a lot in the best possible way. I'm obsessed with that film. <laughs> And I quite like yours. So let's get back to talking about that. Um, feature directorial debut here. And I, I love talking about that process because it is a feat to make your first feature. Yes, it is. Two part question on that. Can you pinpoint a roadblock you encountered that was tough to get past? But then I also want to know like something that happened that made it feel like the real deal, something that you acquired that made you think my film is going to be a reality now. Yeah, I mean, Elliot Page had a lot to do with it, uh, to be honest. Um, you know, obviously the roadblocks of in Canada, we have a grant system to be able to fund our feature films, but if nobody knows who you are, they're not really gonna give a shit. Um, so I think kind of having him come on and, and give us that vote of confidence and say, I believe in this team, I believe in this film. And he's not just like a celebrity executive producer. He's been very like hands-on and so, so unbelievably supportive. So for us, that really kind of swung open the doors to all the possibility. And I think the moment we realized like, oh wow, this is really, you know, really a film that I think is going to connect with a lot of people is being on set with the cheerleaders and, and Evan and seeing, you know, when the camera was on and rolling the cheerleaders, their reaction to Evan and just also seeing so much community and seeing how my actors felt so comfortable on set and felt so safe on set. And there was also so many queer people in the cast and behind the camera. And so it felt really like a community, not just the film community, but the queer community making something special together for the queer community. My head's exploding with follow-up questions. I don't want to forget. <laughs> First, I want to go back, back to Elliot as a producer. What is something he did in that particular capacity that made you feel like you could deliver your best work? I mean, just showing up when we needed him to show up in meetings when, you know, grant bodies or other people were like, what do you mean cheerleaders or athletes? What do you mean? Like, I mean, we have kind of like a crazy story about... Yeah, I mean, when we were... Uh, looking for funding and there was a, a essentially someone we were looking to for funding and we didn't get it the the first time around and we asked why and they said like we just didn't understand why the protagonist was indigenous uh which was really confusing to me and i was like what there's not enough fucking teepees in this movie like i don't understand what this feedback is and why you think that indigenous actors and producers can only tell a very narrow scope of of stories um and the reason why it obviously is uh has an indigenous 
protagonist is because I'm native and I used to be a provincial champion gymnast and I'm a motherfucking producer. So <laughs> like, that's why. And uh, having heard that story, Elliot really stood behind us and um, not only championed us and helped open doors, but then also gave us a lot of freedom. Like he was just like who, his, his team at Page Boy Productions, like our other EP, Matt Jordan Smith, is has been like a huge advocate for us and um, was basically like, who do you want to cast? Like this is, like the whole reason of doing indie film is to be able to like not have studios fingerprints all over it and to get to tell the movie that we wanted to. So like you had free reign when it came to casting yeah. and in what world would we get our first choice of of Evan to play mm. Coach Eileen? Yeah. She's too good in that role. <laughs> <That's too> good. <laughs> Just cause I'm thinking about Tiff now. Did you see Close to You when you were there? Oh, of yes, course. Of we course. have to support the boss. Yeah, there's, the boss. <laughs> there's another one that people need to be talking more about. I thought it was so incredibly beautiful. Yeah. And I, totally. I love seeing everything that Elliot's doing right now. I think it's making a big difference. For the three of you now, this is my favorite question to ask when someone's making their feature directorial debut. What is something about DW as an actor's director and leader on set that you really appreciated and are excited for more actors to get to experience in the future? Oh my God. I mean, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I've been collaborating with DW for like the past six years. So maybe I'm a little biased since we're very close collaborators. But I think that the way that they, we, we've kind of like coined the term on set um, uh, that they're, it's almost like consensual directing where they create this space that feels so incredibly safe. And yes, there's, even as a producer, like there's so much chaos happening on set. There's so many things. We shot the film in 17 days. Um, um, so lots could go awry, but in the creation of these, in these scenes and mapping it out, like you could swear that there was like a, a protective bubble around it where we were able to to come and explore and it was a very quick shoot but like the 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 amount that we were able to uncover and discover while filming was was really special and it's like hats off to DW who is such an actor's director. 17 days. <laughs> I like started to sweat when you said that. Oh yeah, we still like have residual trauma from 17 days. <sighs> impressive, most impressive. Um, yeah, I would say to any actors, you're so lucky. You <laughs> are so lucky and so blessed. CW is like, an actor's director as Devery said, but they really make an effort to make you feel heard and to make it feel like we're all creating art and that's what we're doing. And I feel like it's not often you get that. You don't get someone who actually cares and who's actually putting in the work and who's always there. They say, um, they told me once that they are really good at getting people's best work. They're so right. <laughs> They'll get your best work. You are so blessed. That's all I can say. <laughs> Thank you, Kuda. I, I was actually gonna echo what Devery was saying about space. That was the first word that came to mind, that the space is kind of held for you to do your, your best work because there is a lot of chaos that can happen on a set, a lot of things that need to happen. Um, and sometimes uh, when you're an actor and you need to kind of stay in a certain mindset, it's, it's, uh, it's common that you get sucked into that, into that movement when sometimes you need to be still. And so DW is someone who knows how to hold that stillness in, on set for you to do your best work. Um, and so there is this real like protective barrier that happens around you as an actor so that you can deliver what you need to, which is really rare actually to find. It kind of seems like common sense when you say it out loud, but it's rare that it happens. And most directors understandably will get caught up in that movement on set and DW makes sure that that protective barrier around the story that needs to happen is always happening for you as an actor. So. I look forward to other actors being able to experience that because it's a rarity for us, really. They're also like a freak for actors. Like you're, you're somebody I who am. just like has so much respect and like, yeah, you adore actors. <laughs> I Thank love you. hearing that. I think that's yeah. a very important quality for every director to have. A lot of those answers were making me think of a question that I've gotten in the habit of, of asking quite often. It comes from the idea that this industry, I mean, like, the day we're recording this is the Oscars. Like people give each other awards, super cool. Nobody says good job to themselves nearly enough. So can you each pinpoint a scene where you exceeded your own expectations for your work and can look back on it and say, I am so proud of what I did there. That's so uh, uncomfortable uh, to do. Uh, <laughs> I am very meaningful. I have always had a hard time asking that. And by asking it in more interviews, I've gotten better at it. So I feel like it's an important thing to keep bringing up and making people talk about. No, you're you're right. And, you know, I think it, we're so used to kind of, yeah, giving each other awards or just being 
kind of like humble or just kind of like keep getting through the noise and the and the mess but it, it is important for artists to look you know at themselves and look at what they've been able to create i think for me um in the edit uh editing this film uh the thunderhawks montage where it's like that two and a half minute montage with the prodigy um you know like i i've been editing for a very long time but i think in that moment i think it took me like a week straight uh, cutting five hours of content down to two and a half minutes. Uh, and it was really cool to kind of just chip away and figure out like how I'm linking everything visually together to each cut. And it was really cool to kind of take a step back after those five days and see like this really like pulse pounding moment that really highlighted the brutality and of, of cheerleading. So. I'll follow up on that quickly. What's the, what's the biggest difference between draft one of that montage and where you landed at the end? Nothing. That's the first cut. Yeah. Oh my God, that was the first, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> once you found Most it, you're like, yeah, once I found impressive. it, I was like, that's, that's how it works. Huh. Who Are we is going down this way? Who's I mean, I feel like this is a performance that I'm probably most proud of in my career so far, just because of like the, space and time that was given. I'm also like very weird because I love roles where I actually don't have to speak <laughs> at all. And we would do silent takes and stuff and, and would just kind of like be in the moment and feel each other out and then would have moments where we would say words, but I'm like, give me no lines, love it. Um, no, but with this role, I think the, the take of the final performance in the cheer scene uh, of the final grand finale is a one -er, and what you saw was the 12th take and that was me doing my own stunts i used to be a competitive gymnast and i like had fallen the take before and i was like i think we're gonna have to use what we had like i don't know if i have any left in the tank and and you said you're like we're gonna do one more because well, no, the cheerleaders other... were like oh, yeah you got this you got it and all the they cheerleaders were rallied up. around her and they're like you got this Debbie you got this dev like <laughs> and i was like are you sure and you're just like okay one more and all like it just it was the perfect kind of it all came together because yeah. there had been we had to choreograph like the the cam op into the cheer routine and make sure that there was safety so it was just like there were so many things that had to go right in it and yeah after that 12th take i was just like i could not do another one even if i wanted to but it was like it was the one and i think that was a moment where everything kind of came together and i was like i should not be able to do this because i am not actually a cheerleader or a teenager um <laughs> but i was very proud oneers make me so happy that one <laughs> is too. epic epic <laughs> Um, I really like the basement montage when like Riley and Amanda are yeah. being very sweet. I think there was just something to be said for that moment. And I was like, we, we also did it like towards the end of the shoot. Mm -hmm. So it was great. Cause it's like me and Dev had time to just sink into it. And then it really felt like just happy youth and honesty. And I, I thought that was very fun and amazing. It's also like really vulnerable, yeah. I thought. And it was just like, I don't know if either of us have ever had scenes like that before. And so like, yeah, there, I think there was like a lot of trust built in at that point, so. That makes me happy to hear that you thought that. Um, I was a little, there's a scene where Devin introduces Riley and Amanda and some of the new cheerleaders to the Thunderhawks and this new, the kind of new world of cheerleading. And I was a little nervous the night before. Um, I called my friend and I was like, kind of giving yourself the pep talk of like, you're enough, you're enough, you're enough, you'll do fine, you'll do fine. And then, um, showed up on the day and then we did that scene and we did one take and then DW was like, great, I have what I need. And I was like, <laughs> oh, whoa. And that was just a moment for me of kind of being like, wow, I guess I thought I was kind of enough. I was hoping I'd be enough. And then there was that kind of confirmation from your director after the first take that, that they actually got what they needed for their story. And that was kind of a moment where I was like, Cool. That was nice. <laughs> All yeah. great examples. I'll just tell everyone out there, like, these are great examples. There's so many more, like, really exceptional moments of, like, craftsmanship and performance beats in this movie that really blew my mind. And I look forward to being able to highlight as we get closer to your wider release. I have to end with you. And I'm going to end with our super cut question of South by Southwest. Ooh. 
So it's a big, big, broad question about the industry in general, because I don't like the negativity and the doom and gloom feel that seems to be happening. So in an effort to shine a spotlight on the good out there, can you each name a film you saw recently that you think is a sign that the future is bright for Hollywood? Ooh. Bottoms. Oh. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Bottoms. Oh, nice. One of my favorite yeah. movies of last Easy. year. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Go the other way. <laughs> I'm oh, really man. thinking. That's a that's, that's a really you could think. That's theater what that's what editing is for. Them off. Yeah, theater yeah. camp was. You're, theater you're winning. Oh, <laughs> you're winning. What did I say? Come on. You're taking them. What was that one? Um, Society of Snow. Oh, oh Society of the Snow. Of it's the so snow. good. Yeah, that was really. I thought that was really really good, and it had a lot of new actors in it as well, who did some pretty stellar work. And I always love seeing international storytelling to see what, what's happening around the world and to see the lens through which other people are also seeing um, life and politic and and stuff like that. So I thought that was really, and it's actually a very hopeful story in the end. It's like, it's pretty crazy that it was based on true events. So I was like, I didn't know that. So I thought that was pretty cool. One of the coolest qualities of that movie, it's such like a dark, horrific story and yeah. the way that he tells it makes it feel really hopeful, inspiring. Yeah. And and also like every like everyone in that story feels full. Yeah. And and like no one's being shortchanged screen time if that makes any That's sense. Right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. We can. Um The Heart of a Fall and The Woman King, because I had like it's nice to see just like black representation in all these various genres, so I really love that. But animated, we watched Nimona together. <gasps> yes, oh, Nimona. 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 <laughs> Have you seen the book of Clarence yet? No, I haven't. Uh The Heart of They Fall director, that's that's his next movie. Yes, yes. Singular vision. Everything that comes out of his brain is one of a I'm kind. I'm obsessed. I really love The Heart of They Fall. It was my favorite movie when I watched it, and I got everyone in my family and we had to watch it three times. <laughs> <laughs> At least. <laughs> did you say theater no. camp too? Or well, did I, you I, not? I, I also you, said You came up okay, with all the good, good ones. Okay. okay. I've drawn <laughs> blanks. This, I mean, I am in agreement and like. I'll take it. Yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll, I'll give an extra boost to all these titles and yours as well. Backspot. Keep an eye out for it. Really exceptional work. Thank you for sharing some of your experience Thank with you us so today. Thank, Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much.